Dear friends, in my webinar on NEP, several genuine questions from the participants have come forward and I think uh, this, these questions are common to many groups, many places. Principals, headmasters, educationists, teachers, all are asking questions somewhat the same. I have got a number of questions from various groups which I, I attended. So they write and give me questions. Father, please answer these questions, etc. So several such questions have come. And uh, put together these questions, I thought of uh, giving a few uh, a, a answers that are prominent and common for all of us to understand. But in order to understand, we need to under, uh, first comprehend the major changes and reforms that are suggested in the, in the field of education by this new policy. So I just read out uh, 15 to 16 major areas of uh, changes that are proposed by this uh, new education policy. Based on that, the questions also we will try to answer. Number one is uh, the new policy aims for universalization of education from preschool to secondary level with 100% gross enrollment ratio in school education by 2030. The time limit also is given. By 2030, 100% education will be achieved. NDP 2020 will also bring 2.5 crore out of school children back into the mainstream. It's an ambitious goal and I think it is very, very positive and very good thing that uh, dropout children should be brought back to the school system. It's a very uh, encouraging step. New 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 school curriculum with 12 years of schooling and 3 years of Anganwadi preschooling will be introduced. Emphasis on foundational literacy and numeracy. No rigid separation between academic streams, extracurricular, vocational streams in schools, vocational education to start from class 6 with internship etc is in the policy. Uh, it also talks about teaching up to the uh, at least grade 5 to be in mother tongue or the regional language. Uh, it also talks about assessment reform with a 300 degree holistic progress card tracking student progress for achieving learning outcomes. Gross enrollment ratio in higher education will be raised to 50 percentage. Actually today it is only uh, 26.5 percentage. Uh, higher education curriculum to have flexibility of subjects. Multiple entry exists to be followed with uh, uh, appropriate certification. That is, uh, if a child leaves after one year, he will get a diploma. Uh, sorry, he will get a certificate. Second year, if he leaves, he will get a diploma certificate. Third, if he leaves, he has a degree certificate. And if he completes four years, he will get a degree with a research certificate. Uh, so that is what exit and entry point and once he leaves and he can after one year two years or any year he wants to join restart it is possible with that degree which he has. Academic bank of credits to be established to facilitate transfer of credits. National research foundations to be established to foster a strong research culture. Light but tight regulation of higher education single regulator uh, with four separate uh, verticals uh, for different functions. Affiliation systems to be phased out in 15 years with graded autonomy uh, to colleges. NEP 2020 advocates increased use of technology with uh, equity, national education te uh, technology forum to be created. It also emphasizes setting up the gender inclusion fund, special education zones for disadvantaged region and groups. New policy promotes also multilingualism both in schools and higher education institutions. National Institute for Pali, Persian and Prakrit, Indian Institute of Translation and Interpretation to be set up and a number of other measures have been suggested for teachers, their empowerment etc. So based on all these major reforms, I, th I think I brought out 16 points. Based on this, we can see the number of questions arise. Some people asked me, would NEP augment the job opportunity for teachers? Definitely. If NEP is implemented with four years degree, etc. by 2030, everybody who is passing out will get a job. So 
and nowadays i heard uh, the other day minister himself was speaking that job is guaranteed etc let us hope for the better what would be the role of the private school management in future this is a very big concern because private schools and uh, public schools are the only term which is used in this entire policy and uh, there is no mention about the minority schools or uh, any other schools which is coming other than the private and public schools uh, that may be a concern under the committee for example in the light of the school complex school complex school management committee school complex management committee etc etc can be a, a problem I, i'm sure that that will be clarified uh, when the doubt is uh, raised it also there are, there are many questions we blast and one of the question is would the what it would be the future of english medium schools english medium schools as it is it will continue but people are encouraged to study the government schools etc will follow uh, regional language or the state language and uh, there are a lot of uh, apprehension criticisms and also a lot of opposition about this proposal because it will ultimately uh, divide the people into less privileged who are in the regionally educated and a few who are rich and have they will move towards um, english medium and get uh, uh, international education uh, language education etc so that there, there are problems but uh, the idea government is proposing is that mother tongue is the best uh, for the child to learn and so on uh, but i think any rigid uh, policy like this can create big problem let it uh, be decided with the parents no they should see what is best for their children otherwise what happened a particular section of people and most probably the marginalized the rural belt the poor the minorities etc will be left out in the race of being uh, uh, equitable education somebody asked uh, what would be the future of icsc cbsc curriculum uh, and so on it is uh, boards uh, we have around 61 boards uh, all these boards will continue boards will continue but the policy talks about one area that is the the curriculum and pedagogy will be prepared by national uh, curriculum framework under the ncert and that will be adapted to the states and the other boards but the the content of the curriculum will be prepared by national curriculum formation and uh, the boards will continue as it is in the sense continuing examinations issuing certificates assessment etc will be done by them and uh, but their only uh, apprehension is that their their uh, right to prepare the curriculum and the content will not be with them that is what the uh, slight apprehension i am sure that that also will be clarified in the coming days we blast uh, another question a common question coming out is that how effective is a combination of curriculum and life skills etc because there is no hard separation in subjects that is a curriculum and extra curricular subject etc will be treated the same manner i think it is a well a progressive way of understanding it may have practical difficulties in in the, in the context of india especially in the rural belt the marginalized sectors etc definitely because they don't have the facilities and that uh, uh, if you go only on the basis of merits and so on it will not work out uh, in the in the situations where many things are lacking still technology how is it going to help technology is going to help but then uh, government must make sure that uh, technology will reach out to everybody that uh, digital divide which we are talking about uh, the lack of electricity electricity is uh, given to everybody but then connections are not there and the current uh, flow is not there and uh, gadgets that may not be available tv may not be available i think uh, those aspect if government can level technology is a wonderful thing and uh, and any forward looking education must accept uh, technology and uh, the assistance from technology and this policy is highly in that sense stressing on the use of technology uh, i feel that it is a very good move but i say the government cannot abdicate its responsibility in providing uh, to everybody because it talks about equitable education equitable education means everybody has the opportunity and that must be looked after
uh, it also talks about uh, the language policy many questions came briefly uh, telling about the language policy language policy is always a contentious issues because that is uh, connected to the identity of people language is the identity for example if you talk a, a person who is a tamil or a malayali or a hindi speaking person or a french or a german we, we we identify the person on the basis of language language is very important and i think government must be more sensitive in taking up this kinds of issues convince the people and um, and what is good uh, we must do do not try to impose anything on anybody because india is a is a federal system state also has the authority and also constitutionally education comes under both state and center so any imposition uh, one way traffic will create more and more problems only i think uh, when it comes to contentious issues and so on is wider consultation and uh, taking everybody along is uh, is better for a better administration okay another question people asked is uh, uh in the, the, the uh, yeah important questions i'll take up a few uh, one of the questions again coming out is will school examination be done away with under the new education policy no school examination will continue but the mode of assessing the students will change because the curriculum also is changing pedagogy is changing and therefore the examination also must change now the stress will be on core competencies not about simply writing so many things and uh, and the examination oriented ed education no now only core competency will be assessed and uh, i am sure that uh, this is going to uh, give a, a better way of uh, assessing the students but again there are problems because we know india is not one it is not the cities or the better facility schools all over we have uh, utterly poor schools in poorer areas i'm sure that government cannot go with one way and one mode for the entire country if that is done it will be a very very big mistake because our people are at different levels and geographically we are also different ethnically we are different culturally we are different religiously we are different the beauty of india is the diversity and the diversity must be understood and um, government must consider and accordingly the plans have to be prepared that's what the meaning of equity actually equity means equal opportunity for all uh, in the key principles it talks about equity equity and social justice for example that has to be done uh, another question is what does it mean for board exams under the new education policy exam surely the board exams will be done uh, with the approval of new education policy the school board examinations are expected to become easier on student on the students with the major objective of testing the core competencies of the student the burden of preparing for infamous year end or school end examination is expected to be reduced the students will have uh, opportunity twice to write the examination and further changes with regards to the models of board exams such as whether it should be conducted as an annual semester or module exams may also be implemented uh in that sense uh, assessment system and examination system will be definitely changing and i am sure that government will give us since it is all time faced uh, uh, changes the guidelines also will come to us soon and once the gu guideline comes we will see whether it is acceptable to all or is there any major changes needed another question is who will overlook the school and board examinations under nep 2020 definitely there is a board a new system is uh, introduced with the implementation of nep that is called uh, the national assessment center under the name of parak you know parak parak means performance assessment review and analysis of knowledge for holistic development uh, this will be established soon the center will be responsible for suggesting guidelines for the student assessment and evaluations which will be implemented in all school boards including state 
um, education boards etc now definitely there will also be a problem because everything centralized and central will look after means this concurrent uh, uh, list uh, which comes which have uh, education as part of the state also and these kinds of decisions can create uh, undue uh, sorry unnecessary uh, tension between states and center i am sure that government will be aware of this because the, the various step is being taken by the government of india in finalizing the new education policy i uh, hope uh, they will take uh, positive recommendations and uh, uh, necessary rectification they will try to do another major question people are asking is uh, can you explain what is this 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 system and i am sure that the pan indian level i have seen that many of us are confused many teachers are confused i can tell you this is not about class okay 5 means uh, age 3 above that means 3 and a half let's calculate from 4 4 5 6 7 8 these five are called the first five and this is the foundation stage that means uh, including the three years at home and above that the four five six seven eight up to class two including the nursery and today it is called uh, uh, bal vatikas and then standard one and standard two that five years is called the foundation stage and the next three years is called uh, preparatory stage which comes uh, after uh, age 8 that means 9 10 and 11 then comes the uh, we have the middle stage which is called uh, 12 12 13 and 14 age then comes we have the final which is called secondary stage it it comes at age we have uh, 15 16 17 and 18 that means 9 to 12 classes will be clubbed together which is called the secondary stage it is not about a class as such it is about a age based classes i am sure that the clarification uh, will uh, clear your doubts okay and uh, it has also stage by stage uh, seamless syllabi and also the curriculum will be introduced so the foundational stage preparatory stage middle stage and secondary stage this is called 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 system up to class 12 up to the age of 18 then uh, uh, question people asked about what about the minorities and so on in the policy if you look at there is no minority rights or minority uh, sc- schools etc there is only private and public schools are mentioned so this uh, i am sure that the government will clarify i am sure that they will not touch upon the constitutional rights of the minorities and minority schools must have uh, its own privileges that is prescribed by the constitution and government will not uh, uh, take away any of the rights because at least there is no mention of that and since it is not mentioned people are raising the questions i can understand that and i'm sure that this has already been brought to the notice of the government and if it is anything going against the constitution then definitely uh, the the judiciary will uh, clarify it we have one question people are ask uh, another question people asked is this national education policy 2020 recommends for teaching in the uh, okay teachers changes for example yes a lot of changes have been proposed because what the idea is that our education must be vibrant and dynamic you know to do that when the best agents are teachers and today we see the teachers are not uh, many of them getting into the, are getting updated themselves about the content matter about the subjects the, the changes that are happening in that particular field etc therefore the government says no we need to give more stress on teachers empowerment and therefore it says teachers eligibility test will be there uh, national testing agency will prepare the modules and questions etc we have also 50 hours of uh, in service training is proposed for teachers for teachers empowerment uh, this is called cpd continuous professional development test etc and we also have npst national professional standard testing for teachers 
and all these things are aimed not to create more problem for teachers uh, but it's all to empower them so that they will in turn empower the education system because the, the policy rightly points out that teachers are actually the makers of the future they are the nation builders so several questions of that sort have come and um, some are genuinely creating confusion the people uh, some of them are very very clear uh, from the policy I'm sure that the policy makers, the policy implementers, etc., will take note of all these doubts in the positive sense and clarify the doubts as per the constitutional provisions that is given to all of us. Because education is for the future of the nation. There should not be any one-sided ideology or one-sided uh, uh, triumphalistic ideas so that we did it and we move ahead. You know, education is not that kind of a thing. It is, it is for everybody and for the future of the nation. Thank you. God bless you all.